being haunted by my dead foot. Seriously, Lefty, get over it. He's just mad because I sent a doctor slash assassin after him, but he had it coming to him. The reason why my amputated limb feels ever present is because it was my foot that was amputated and not my brain. Though sometimes that's questionable. Think of a computer. The hardware has been removed, but the software is still running, and it's sending out a zillion error messages, trying to get your attention to inform you that Lefty isn't responding. Speak to me, Lefty. Maybe you've also heard of phantom sensation. With phantom sensation, you're on good terms with your dearly departed. So you are aware of him, but he isn't hurting you. Pay attention, Lefty. You can feel your foot and even wiggle your ghost toes, but it isn't painful. I'm wiggling my toes. Honest. The thing that differentiates phantom sensation from phantom limb pain is the pain. About the closest phantom limb simulation I can think of is to get hooked up to a TENS unit. Sometimes the pain is on a low level. Other times it's like someone <coughs> turned it up to the max. Lefty! But that's only one variety of pain. If I've learned anything, it's that pain comes in a variety of flavors. So what varieties does my phantom limb have to offer? A common one is feeling like your foot's asleep, which I suppose it is, permanently, with that prickly pins and needles sensation. Other times it feels like I've crammed my foot into a shoe that's a couple sizes too small. This image definitely resonates. Sometimes it feels like my foot is still there, but curved. Which makes some sense, considering that my calf contains the nerves that used to run down to my foot. And that bit of calf has been wrapped around my severed bone. Then take those wrapped up nerves and put them in a prosthetic socket and I can see where our brain got the idea from. This is more weird than it is painful. I get the occasional phantom itch, usually in the same spot, right there. Just close enough to my actual leg that used to trick me. I mean, if my toes itch, I know someone's playing a practical joke, but if it's right by Stumpy, then I reach down to silence the itch with a well-placed scratch, only to grasp empty air. Stop toying with me, Lefty. Phantom pain is weirdly specific. It's not like, ow, my toe hurts. More like, Half a centimeter down and to the left of the bottom left corner of my big toe, someone is hammering in a two inch nail. Like I said, weirdly specific. Sometimes my foot feels achy or has some sharp pain where it used to before we split up. But by far the worst sensation is getting tased. It's so amazing. Lefty! Knock it off! Um, my foot is getting stabbed. So, like, phantom limb pain. I'm sitting around, minding my own business. Feel the phantom limb pain. It hurts. But then I'll just be sitting there. Nothing happening over here. Then, like, whoa, who tasered me? It was the dead foot. I see, and then I look crazy because I'm talking about dead feet tasering me. But it's a thing. Some amputees get terrible phantom limb pain. Others get it mildly, or just once in a while, or maybe just in the early months after amputation. Other amputees don't experience it at all. Let me know in the comments what your ghost foot is like. It's this uncertainty that's so unnerving for prospective amputees. I can't comment on your situation, but for me, I've been living with severe phantom limb pain, yet I don't regret my decision to amputate. For me, my quality of life is still better than it was with what I was dealing with before. When I woke up from amputation, I could feel my toes, but they didn't hurt. The first few days, I felt post-surgical pain in my actual leg, but no phantom pain yet. Then I started to have the occasional fleeting moment of phantom pain. Then one time, I was abruptly thrust into full-fledged phantom pain constantly. This delay is common, and there's a reason for it. Watch. Imagine your mom and your teenage son go somewhere. At first, you're not alarmed that he isn't home, but as time goes on, you start to notice his absence more and more. You decide to check in with him. He doesn't answer your text. He's probably busy having fun, so I'm not too worried about him. I'll give him some more time before texting again. Still no answer. That's weird. So you decide to call. No answer. You're tempted to panic. 
But remind yourself that he is a teenager and they're notorious for ignoring mom. You force yourself to wait one more time. After watching the clock, you call him. Lefty is non-responsive. Alert! Alert! Lefty is missing. You start calling every five seconds. No sooner does one call go unanswered than you immediately start the next call. Convinced that something terrible has happened to your little darling and he has been murdered. A sadly valid fear. As days turn to weeks, the calls become less frequent as you begin to accept that he isn't going to answer. You still try periodically, but that frantic intensity you had initially has been replaced by a numb inability to let go. That's actually really sad when explained that way, but it's a good analogy for what's going on with your nervous system. It takes the brain time to realize that something major has happened. That's when things get intense, but eventually the intensity fades away to whatever your baseline is. I have a crazy phantom limb story, so click the bell so you don't miss it. Oh no! The bell is haunted! Hurry! Click the like button to make the phantom feet go away! Phew! Thanks! Phantom pain can be pretty intense in the weeks following amputation, so I'm making a separate video all about it. How long it lasts and what could make it worse. In the meantime, be good to your phantom limb and it'll be good to you. I don't actually know whether that's true, but keeping the good karma going is a good policy. Right, Lefty?